Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm just recording a short video to give a overview to AI overviews as Google has released a significant update to them in the past few hours. Google has made AI overviews now accessible to users in the United States even when they're not signed into a Google account which means that users in browsing incognito or simply not logged in can still see and still interact with AI overviews. Previously, this was only available for logged in users. The AI generated summaries at the top of the search results are just part of what Google has been working on over the past few months. And this is the first significant step since the initial rollout uh, on May 14th in line with Google I.O which did see some reduction over June and um, July as some of the AI overview generated summaries weren't potentially the best. Things like glue on pizza and um, I don't know, probably somersaulting a toddler, I think was one of them potentially. But this shows that in the light of a recent DOJ uh, lawsuit and findings, Google is very much pressing on. It's business and usual. They were once kind of behind the AI race. They're very much now pushing, in my opinion, to be ahead of that. Uh, Apple have delayed a lot of their products. Meta appears to be delaying as well, especially in the European Union due to GDPR and other regulations. So kind of recapping what AI overviews are. Now, AI overviews are designed to provide concise succinct summaries of information directly in the search results making it easier and quicker for users to get answers without clicking through to links and websites. This alludes to the fact that we might have potentially more zero-click searches as Google has is working harder to keep people within the Google ecosystem and not actually clicking on links and go through to the sites. With feature snippets, I believe we saw around 35% increase or 35% of searches result in zero clicks. If AI overviews are more interactive, more prominent, and enter that conversational mode with Gemini, we could potentially see this move higher. As well as releasing this update to non-logged in users, it also enhances the visibility of uh, sources, uh, linking directly to the content, uh, the sidebar on the right, and they also feel, from just personal endoscopy, slightly larger, slightly more prominent, and slightly more colourful as they're loading, definitely grabbing the attention a lot more. However, the fact that we are including sources and working towards this a little bit harder is, in my opinion, better because it it's showing a little bit more transparency. It's showing us how information is presented. It's giving us a little bit more clarity into where the information is coming from and not just a direct cut and steal, um, as some of the early beta versions were. <laughs> now, this hasn't this just hasn't happened within the US. We've also seen the rollout extend to the UK, India, Japan, um, Indonesia, um, it, it's reaching now seven countries, including the US. But the inclusion of unsigned users in this rollout actually enhances and actually questions how this is going to affect SEO on a broader scale. From the updated Google Search Console documentation, as well as the updated AI overview documentation, which has only happened again in the past few hours, we know that traffic for AI overviews will be recorded as search traffic within Search Console. So that is within the standard search report in performance. We know that clicks will be counted when uh, external source clicks are clicked on within AI overviews. So assumedly these are the citation clicks referred to as external source clicks and will be recorded in Search Console if a user clicks through to your site. With regards to impressions, the standard impression rules apply. Impressions will only be counted when that URL is rendered. So it's when a user scrolls or expands the AIO review for that URL to come into vision, basically, when it renders with a review port on the browser. Position is where it gets slightly more complicated. According to the documentation, AIO reviews take up a single position within search. So regardless if you're the first source, the fifth, the sixth, even the tenth in some cases, you'll be recorded as position one. So this could start skewing data in Search Console. We could be appearing in Search Console to have an average position move to first. This will affect the average position produced by the central tendency algorithm. But we could actually see a reduction in impressions. We could be inversely, oh, we're now first, but less impressions and no clicks. 
So this could change how we have to start looking at Search Console data and how we have to start discerning between AIOVs, different search features, and monitoring it. And I'm really, personally, I'm really curious to see how third-party tracking tools will cope with this and whether or not they'll start over-reporting, over-indexing certain positions across different things. So there's an initial kind of overview of what we're seeing. Obviously, this is early days. We don't know how long this rollback is going to be. But one thing we do know is that lab data as well, just to mention, isn't going to be included in Search Console. So it is now just for real world live data for what people are seeing on queries. I hope you find this information useful in this summary. Um, there's a lot of really good articles going around on this at the moment, especially looking at how Google is pushing ahead in light of the um, anti-monopoly lawsuit from the DOJ. But I do hope you have enjoyed this video. My name has been Dan Taylor. If you like this kind of summary, as well as other kind of content being put out there around SEO and digital marketing, please do consider subscribing to the channel and dropping this video a like. And I'd love to hear in the comments your thoughts on AI overviews and how you're preparing for them as part of your wider SEO strategies. Thank you very much for watching.